What is going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? What I have for you today in this video is actually a RAM installed on the same laptop that you guys saw me replace a hard drive in there, which is the Acer Aspire 4730Z. <laughs> Alright, so previously I replaced the hard drive and now I'm going to add more RAM in there. Originally, this laptop came with 2GB of RAM, and I bought the exact same RAM stick, the same brand, the same model number and everything, and f for another 2GB, so now I will have a total of 4GB of RAM in there. So, what are you going to need for this? Well, you're going to need your Phillips screwdriver, just go into one of your Phillips screwdriver sets like I have right here by StarTech, and just grab uh, a small Phillips screwdriver, that's it. All, all you need is that and of course well whatever RAM you got it's actually empty because it's already installed in there but I did record uh, uh, when I was installing the RAM so before I get started keep in mind I'm not responsible for any damages you have done to your product uh, any damages you have made uh, that's on you because you're using this video uh, at your own risk and uh, this is only for informational purposes only all right just wanted to keep that in mind so without further ado let's get started all right guys so in order to change the RAM you want to flip it over uh, go to the back of your computer and then try to find the smaller uh, compartment and that's available and before you do anything make sure if you're using a laptop make sure your battery is taken off so that way there's no power left in the computer and if you're a desktop user uh, all you have to do is make sure that the power cord is unplugged. But for laptops, you want to have your uh, battery uh, unplugged so that way uh, there's no power left on the computer. And as you can see, I found the smaller compartment of this Acer Aspire 4730Z. And I'm just unscrewing these here. And then once you're done unscrewing them, then you want to lift open the door and then your RAM's revealed. Alright, so here is our RAM revealed at a, at a closer lookup. And as you can see, I flipped it over. And see where my screwdriver is pointing at? Those are the two latches you want to uh, push back a little. As you can see, I'm doing it right here. The RAM will come out at a 45 degree angle, and then that's how you remove it. Now, to put the RAM back in there, you're going to put it back on the same 45 degree angle and make sure the sockets are uh, matched up, as you can see right there. And then, once you get it lined up, then you push it in. Now, people would use one finger and push in the middle I like to use two fingers and push on each side as you just saw right there so that way it you know the the RAM doesn't seem that fragile but just in case I don't want to break anything and then I'm gonna open up my new RAM in here now each of these sticks are two gigabytes the one that you just saw me put back here there was the original Samsung two gigabyte RAM stick and this one that I just opened is actually the same brand and it's the exact exact same model and everything except it's just newer that's it and then there's another slot right there where I'm gonna put my new RAM stick in there and then I'm gonna do the same way by installing it and once you're done with that then you just wanna put the cover back on as you can see what I'm doing right here after that make sure everything is closed tightly and then I'm just gonna you know, put these screws back on and then after putting these screws back on, uh, we can start um, putting everything back together before we uh, get into the computer. Make sure it's recognized in the BIOS and then go into Windows and uh, make sure that it's recognized in Windows as well. In this case, I'm running Windows 7. Alright, and then you just want to put your battery back on and yes, this is actually a new battery. If you guys saw a different model at the beginning, that was the old battery. This one's newer because the other one was depleted, so I just bought a new battery at the same time. And there you go. Alright guys, so now what I'm going to do is, before I boot into Windows, I'm going to go into the BIOS of my computer just to make sure that the RAM is recognized. And normally it'd be like F2, F10, 11, the delete button, whatever. You know, it'll depend on what motherboard you have. And I'm going to go into the main page right here and as you can see 4095 megabytes that's four gigabytes of ram installed all right guys so now we are in windows 7 gonna go into the start button here right click on computer and then we're gonna go all the way down to properties and this loads up the specs of your computer and everything and as you can see i got four gigabytes of ram installed and for a closer look four gigabytes of ram 
and there you go. That's how you install the RAM. So as you can see, installing RAM into the Acer Aspire 4730Z was not bad at all. A very easy process and the same goes for uh, other laptops out there and the same for desktops except that the RAM for desktops are longer and if you have the older Mac Pros instead of the cylinder uh, design then obviously those RAM sticks are much bigger than a normal PC. Now as you saw in the video it said 4 gigabytes of RAM and I did see that this computer can go all the way up to 4 gigabytes of RAM but uh, I was wondering how come it said only 2.93 gigabytes was usable and you guys saw that in the clip and as I kept doing research it was saying oh that's a 32-bit operating system for Windows 7 and so you're gonna get that no matter what but I find that kinda hard to believe because I also have other 32-bit machines in the house and they have Windows 7 on it and it recognized the full gigab the full 4 gigabytes of RAM and so I'm not sure why is this 2.93 gigabytes usable but it did say 4 gigabytes of RAM however I'm still doing more research on that so the, for the reasoning behind that, I'm still unsure at the time this is being recorded and I'm still going to do more research about it. I'm thinking maybe the rest of the memory was used for the video card or something, which I don't believe so. Maybe it would. It would have specified that because before when I had 2 gigabytes of RAM, it automatically recognized the full 2 gigs and then with the 4 gigabyte, I don't know what's going on. So. I'm gonna have to check into that more and if you guys know any reasons why or any possible reasons that could be um, I would like to hear what you guys say in the comments below any help would be appreciated and I will still keep doing more research and anyway guys that's it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one